ൃന്ദ ഹരെ കൃഷ്ണ ഹരെ കൃഷ്ണ 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 ഹരി 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 രാമ ഹരി രാമ 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 ഹരി 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 കൃഷ്ണ പേജ് വൺ ആർ ഇൻവൊക്കേഷൻ ഓമ ജ്ഞാന തിമരാന്തശ്യാനഞ്ജനശലാക്കായ I was born in the darkest ignorance. I was born in the darkest ignorance. And my spiritual master opened my eyes. And my spiritual master opened my eyes. With the torch of knowledge. With the torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. I offer my respectful obeisances to him. Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So now what I think we should do is go to where we have left off. And that is uh, chapter 13, is it not, with this group? Yes, yes? Maharaj. Shloka, please. Three, number three. Can you please tell us the shloka number? Number three. Three. Okay, great. So, everyone ready? Shetra Gyan Kapi Mang Vidhi Sarva Kshetra Ishu Bharata Kshetra Kshetra Gnayur Gyanang Yachta Gyanang Matang Mama O Sayana Bharat You should understand that I'm also the knower in all bodies. And to understand this body and its knower is called knowledge. That is my opinion. Hare Krishna. Someone for the first paragraph of the purport, please. Manasi <laughs> Ganga, uh, please go. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna, please read. Purport. While discussing the subject of the body and the knower of the body, the soul and the super soul, we shall find three different types of study. The Lord, the living entity and matter. In every field of activities, in every body, there are two souls. The individual soul and the super soul. because the super soul is the plenary expansion of the supreme personality of god has krishna krishna say i am also the knower but i am not the individual knower of the body i am the super knower i am present in every body as the paramatma our super soul okay very nice um we can continue then with someone else uday please go oh uh, yes hari krishna one who studies the subject matter of the field of activity and the knower of the field very minutely in terms of this bhagavad gita can attain to knowledge the lord says i am the knower of the field of activities in every individual body the individual may be the knower of his own body but he is not in knowledge of other bodies the supreme personality of god head who is present as the super soul in all bodies bodies knows everything about all bodies he knows all the different bodies of all the various species of life a citizen may know everything about his patch of land but the king knows not only his palace but all the properties possessed 
by the individual citizens similarly one may be the proprietor of the body individually but the supreme lord is the proprietor of all bodies the king is the original proprietor of the kingdom and the citizen is the secondary proprietor similarly the supreme lord is the supreme proprietor of all bodies thank you very much we'll get someone else to read the next paragraph you get this one and that the body consists of the senses the supreme lord is the second kesa which means the controller of the senses he is the original controller of the senses just as the king is the original controller of all the activities of the state the citizens are secondary controllers the lord says i am also the knower this means that he is the super knower the individual soul knows only his particular body in the vedic literature it is stated as follows kese trani hi satrani jam kapi subhasube tanni beti sayogatma tataha kshetra nya uchate Okay, very good. Uh, next person, we'll just go on a nice roll with reading here. Placenta, please. Um, Adikarta. Hare Krishna, I can't see the first line. Okay, thank you. This body is called the Chetra, and within it dwells the owner of the body and supreme Lord, who knows both the body and the owner of the body. Therefore, he is called the knower of all fields. The distinction between the field of activities, the knower of activities, and supreme knower of activities is described as follows: perfect knowledge of the constitution of the body, the constitution of individual soul. and constitution of super soul is known in vedic literature as jnana that is the opinion of krishna to understand both the soul and super soul as one yet distinct is knowledge one who does not understand the field of activity no knower of activity is not in perfect knowledge one has to understand the position of prakriti purusha and ishvara the knower who dominates or controls nature and individual soul one should not confuse the three in their different capacities one should not confuse the painter the painting and the easel this material world which is the field of activities is nature enjoyer of nature is the living entity about them both is the supreme controller the personality of godhead go ahead Shurika? yes please come it is it is stated in vedic language in the sweta ashvatara upanishad bhokta bhogyam preritaram cha matva sarvam prakritam trividham brahm brahmam etat there are three brahman conceptions prakriti is brahman as the field of activities the jiva individual soul is also brahman and is trying to control material nature and the controller of both of them is also brahman but he is the factual controller thank you so much uh, nitai priya you want to do Yes um in this chapter it will also be explained that out of the two knowers one is fallible and the other is infallible one is superior and the other is subordinate one who understands the two knowers of the field to be one and the same contradicts the supreme personality of uh, uh did I read that right two knowers of the field to be one and the same contradicts the supreme personality of godhead who states here very clearly I am also the knower of the field of activity. One who misunderstands a rope to be a serpent is not in knowledge. There there are different kinds of bodies and there are different owners of the bodies. 
because each individual soul has its has his individual capacity for lording it over material nature there are different bodies but the supreme is also present in them as the controller the word cha is significant for it indicates the total number of bodies that is the opinion of Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushana. Krishna is the super soul present in every, in each and every body apart from the individual soul. And Krishna explicitly says here that real knowledge is to know that the, that the super soul is the controller of both the field of activities and the finite enjoyer. Okay, thank you everyone for reading. Yay, that's wonderful. Good, good. So there's a lot of good juicy stuff here. And, you know, one revelation that I got from this reading, and of course, we've read the prayer part quite a few times, is that Krishna's involved. He's not disinvolved. He's right there, a uh, super soul, caring. He's upanams on the mantascha. He is actually the overseer and over -permitter. Now, that's a big job, watching over, like, we talk about super soul, looks like he's the supervisor, right? And uh, not only that, he's sanctioning. He's kind of giving you what you want. That's what's indicated. Uh, the soup, um, overseer and uh, over provi yeah, provider, basically. Nitcho nitchanam titanas chitananam eko bahunam yo vidadhati kaman. Kaman means desires. So Krishna's there seeing to your desires. But sometimes our desires are ill-motivated. Still, he takes it upon himself. Is that really one you want? Like a loving parent who kind of warns the child that, that extra candy is not good for you. Oh, okay, you're going to rant and rave. You're going to scream and kick and put holes in the drywall. So, uh, okay, I'll give you what you want. Okay, great. Here it is. So that's his kindness. That's his gentleness. He sits there as Chitragya. We heard early that Chitragya refers to the individual soul. And, uh, but then there's the Supreme Soul, who's also seated next to the soul or within the soul, uh, because the Lord is, uh, according to Brahma Samhita, the Lord is everywhere, like in every atom and within every being. This is how we understand it. Uh, so there's two chitragyas, two living entities that, that are prominent features in the body. But let us not forget, there's lots of other living cells inside the body that uh, are accompanying us. Um, we, there's a lot going on in our body. It's like a condominium. I'm right now looking at a condo. That's a big building. I guess it's maybe 25 stories, which is not super big. But there's a lot of activity going on in there. If we were to go and see what's happening in that building, someone's looking at the screen. Somebody's looking at the computer. Two other people are just, you know, eating pizza together. Um, someone else is having a nap. Another person is on the phone, you know, calling someone overseas. Another person is at the desk, just working out their summer vacation or this weekend vacation. Should we go to the Rathiyatra or shall we not? You know, a lot is going on in that one building, condominium. And so similarly in our bodies, there's lots going on. There's lots of jiva, souls, but there's one principal soul. And then there's second one that is actually presides over the supervisor, right? And that is Krishna, ultimately. So two Shetragyas are there. And um, hallelujah, what can I say? Um, God is everywhere. When somebody says God is everywhere, we have to take it uh, uh, to be literal. I think I mentioned to you this once before. I remember Mr. Doulon. Mr. Doulon was our teacher. I can't remember what he taught but he taught something. And he's saying it was religion, had to be, right? God is everywhere. And he was by the blackboard. We had blackboards in those days. No whiteboards existed. And he had took a piece of chalk, said, God is even in this chalk. 
uh, piece of, and he took that chalk and he put it on the ledge by the blackboard and he dramatically let it hit the, the ledge. Very, let's say, yeah, dramatically, you know? And I remember, I still remember the name of the person who objected. Her name is Alice Lenders. I still remember. <laughs> it must have been grade five or something. I said, oh, that can't be. She was protesting. God can't be in that piece of chalk. How can he? All the pictures that I've seen of Jesus, like he's, you know, he's acting like a shepherd. He's with these people. He's uh, healing someone else over here. He's talking to his apostles, his disciples. But we never saw Jesus in a piece of chalk, you know. So, I mean, she said that out of ignorance. But if we can understand uh, the teachings of the Gita, where the Lord can appear in uh, the smallest dimension uh, and appear just anywhere, then it makes sense that the God can be a piece of chalk. He can be on the floor. You know, he can be in the plant that's next to you. God is everywhere, even in the pillar, as Prahlad confirmed. Yes, he's in the pillar as well. Hare Krishna. Just some opening lines on this, some reflections. Hare Krishna. If we had a lot of people on this Zoom call, it would mean we'd be seeing a whole bunch of people would be on the screen at the same time, right? There's a lot of mystical things that science has conjured up. Well, God already established these things. You know, you know somebody is, you know, acting Elvis out in the latest movie. No, I didn't see it if you're asking me. No, I won't go out of my way to see Elvis. But if I happen to be going to India and it's on the plane, I will definitely press and I'll get some history. <laughs> so Elvis is on the screen and he's duplicated and he's on all the other screens in the plane. Anybody who watches it, you know. So in this way, we can understand the mystical abilities of the Paramatma. Hare Krishna. Any uh, questions or comments from any of you folks? Realizations? Maharaj? Yes, thank you. I love the, your example of the, uh, the condominium. Uh, right. And uh, it reminds me of another statement of Prabhupada about the condominium. That when we are, we are just attached to a couple of brothers or sisters, that doesn't matter according to what we have. A Prabhupada said, we forget that we have so many brothers and sisters in the same womb of our mother all those worms, parasites, bacteria. So those are also our brother and sister because they were in the same womb with us. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yes, that is stated in the Bhagavatam. So in the same way, uh, yeah, we're sharing a lot of space together. That is the point. And uh, the most illustrious entity that we're sharing space with is, of course, the Paramatma, the super soul. Yeah. Thank you for reminding us about that, right? Good. And you know, just in your own house, you go and clean, you say, oh, that spider is in my space. Wow, I didn't expect that. Or you got some mice coming and helping them in. Of course, they usually do come into the house when it starts freezing. Have you all noticed that? Any of you devotees up there, you know, from Cleveland, right down south to uh, Florida, you know that you've got living entities, little creepy crawlies coming into your house. You think it's your house? And these little guys came in and invited themselves and uh, they're doing their business. So yeah, a lot of space is shared within one body for sure. Yeah. Any other realizations? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I think he can hear you. Go ahead. Oh, oh. yesterday when I went to 
pick up the roses uh, from the tree. I saw the very minute uh, insects uh, coming out from the plants, from the uh, roses. So I immediately realized in every, that is less than a, less than one millimeter. Okay, Maybe one millimeter. I'm, one, I'm not sure if he can hear you, Maharaj. I can hear you just now, oh, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, so try. I could re I could um, uh, realize that in all that um, insects, small insects, there is paramatma. So I should not make them any harm. So I just left them without uh, watering, uh, without cleaning the roses. After some time, I after all they left, I cleaned the roses. You, you, did you have some bugs in the roses? Is that what you very about? very minute bugs, Maharaj? Okay, Less than half fine. a millimeter. But I could realize that they all they all have uh, the souls, uh, the super yeah. soul in that in that minute uh, uh, insects are what you call that one. So I could realize immediately the Paramatma is there in all these small insects. So That's I true. don't. So I was feeling so much compassionate with that uh, minute. Okay, well, that's good. Fantastic. Yes, Dharma. So Maharaj, my realization is uh, material energy and spiritual energy, all spiritual, even material energy is spiritual energy. Yes. Right? Yeah. But material energy, it entangles you into the, uh, because of Maya. Yes. Uh, to karmic action and reaction. But you can use the same material energy, doubt it to Krishna consciousness. Yes. Then you are out of it. So that's the way right. how you look at the things. That's what I realize. Yes, that's right. That's right. Exactly. Well put. So the material energy, which we talk about in a derogatory way, oftentimes, um, is how do we handle that? Well, the best thing is to just simply channel it in the service of Krishna. That's all. You know, you know just like say, for instance. Manure. Manure is the stool of animals mixed with other components, right? And you can turn, you can say that is stool, but you can turn stool into something that makes the, the ground fertile, right? People always speak about, you know, excrements in a negative way, right? Uh, we usually take our shoes off before we go into the temple or before we go into the house because we may have stepped on stool, but most stools, many stools, are just fertilizer for the plants and everything to come up, yeah? Uh, where, and where we benefit from, yeah. So I guess we have to be careful not to uh, denigrate prakriti so much, the material energy. We should see it as... Uh, vital and can be used in the Lord's service. We are trapped in this body made of material energy. And so we have to make the best use of it, you know, channel it towards the Lord. Yeah. And that is real renunciation, according to Rupa Goswami, using all the elements that are around you, including the property and use it in Christian service. That's right. Some or other. But there were some devotees, they were doing Sankirtan and they were uh, collecting, they had flowers, they were giving out flowers and uh, they were giving them to people and asking for donations for the fundraising of the building or for our spiritual causes. And then there were some, they ran out of flowers, you know, they like carnations. So they decided to pick some leaves from the local bushes and they gave everyone a leaf and they were getting donations. And after a while, the very innovative ones so that didn't have any leaves, they just went and make believe, here's a leaf, please give us your donation. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm getting at is we can use anything in Krishna service. You can give air to somebody and say, can you give a donation for this air? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. That takes innovation and creativity. I don't know if all... Anyways, we should always be equipped with some books, right? 
that's the best thing to distribute. I always have a mantra card, have a book to give to someone that you meet on the street. Right? So that's our real business, right? Okay, anything else, Prabhu's? Anybody else have some realizations? We've got some great Maharatis on. Adhikarta, I didn't hear from you yet. I was thinking, I was, I was thinking, Maharaj, that, you know, out of, out of this existence that we all have, you know, how we just overlook that Krishna is involved in everything. You know what I mean? Mm. That, that yes. every, everything, you know, we, we like to say, you know, oh, well, you know, God woke me up today. And it's like, all right, I'm going on with my day. We don't realize that he's driving the car. He's, he's providing the job. He's the job itself. He's everything. He's the wind. He's the air. He's the animal. He's the guy you're waving to. He's everything. You know, we just go throughout our day just, you know, forgetting that, you know, and we have to just wake ourselves back up to that Krishna is involved in our lives and we need to, you know, give that respect back. Yes. Thank you so much. Well said. Well said. Uday, you have something you want to say? Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. So same thing like was Prabhu Prabhu was uh, saying. Uh, I'm just elaborating on it. Uh, like you were telling that you know Krishna is like all in. So like uh, when like on the planet where like Lord Narayan lives, so his devotees are also have like four hands, right? So it could have been like he would have just given me okay. I would have like four hands. You just have like two, something like that because you are like servant or something. But it's really different. Like how he treats his devotee is something like on equal and maybe like something on larger level than himself. So that thing about uh, Lord is really attractive that he doesn't treat himself like a Lord, right? Although his position is that he treats his devotees uh, like his Lord, something along that line. And he treats them on their equal level. So that makes you love more because, you know, you don't deserve those sort of like love and affection. Because you're not at that position. So, yeah. So, like, that thing is, like, really attractive. It's always good to look at God uh, with love and not just uh, determine that, oh, Krishna's there. He's just existing. Yeah. Maybe he's just watching over. But actually, he may be, he's watching over with affection. And he's always giving us opportunities I think that's one thing that we should always be considering. He's giving us opportunities yes. that we don't always consider. You know, yeah. he's opening up so many doors for us to advance spiritually, to advance in any way, shape, or form. You know, and uh, you know, materially, spiritually, all the way through, he's giving us so much. Uh, we call it luck. Uh, we say, oh, it's by my good fortune, but it's by Krishna's good fortune that things are happening. Krishna's delivering the goods to, to everyone, even when people are asking for the wrong things. He'll say, are you sure you want this? Yes, I want this. Okay, so, okay, fine. Here you go. Take it, get burned out, <laughs> become materially exhausted, and then I'll talk to you sometime. Uh, about uh, what you really want. So there's a nice example given in, by Sanatana Goswami and the to story of the touchstone. One person, he learned that he had a touchstone or he heard someone else had a touchstone and he, he understood that if you take this touchstone, you contact it with certain metals, it will turn into gold. So he asked Sanatana Goswami, I heard that you know where the touchstone is. And he said, yes, it's over in that garbage pile over there. I said, really, it's over in the garbage? So he scrambles around, finds the touchstone. And then he takes this and he becomes fabulously rich. And he's got his own gold rush thing going. And after a while, he's uh, accumulated all this wealth. And uh, years pass by. And he goes through the usual material uh, circle, endeavors, and he gets exhausted materially. And he thinks, hey, wait a minute, that sadhu that I met, Sanatan, I, um, he, he told me 
where this touchstone is, which is supposed to be promising to give so much, so much material blessing. So I got, I acquired it. He said, it's in the pile of garbage. No, I have to wonder why would a touchstone that he's aware of that can yield so much wealth be in a, a heap of garbage? So we went back to the sadhu and, and he said, listen, uh, you, do you remember me? I said, yes, I do. Uh, uh, you told me about the touchstone. Yes, I remember. Okay. Well, I had asked you for the most valuable thing and about this touchstone. And you told me it was in a heap of garbage. Well, if it was so valuable, why did you put it in the heap of garbage? So Sanatana Goswami says, well, you weren't really ready to hear what real, for me, what truly is the highest and most valuable thing in this world. Are you ready now? Said, well, I'm definitely more ready than before. So here's the most valuable thing, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So now the, the, the karmi, the person who went through the material exhaustion program, is now realizing he's got something better than he had before. He has God in the form of the name. So uh, there's greater value to spiritual sound than to a heap of gold, for instance. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Hope you like the story. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions or comments that uh, you'd like to you know, extract from this uh, particular purport and verse? Anybody? All right, if I may. Uh, the, the word Paramatma came about many times in this Zoom. And I was thinking of a verse in the Bhagavatam. I think it's in the third canto. And, and you will remember for sure. What I think is Maitreya that says, oh Lord, everybody thinks that your lotus feet are so far away because Vaikuntha is unbelievably far. And it takes a lot of effort to get there, but they forget that your lotus feet are in the, in the hearts of everybody as Paramatma. So, uh, you remember that verse. Can you uh, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, the verse, you're talking about Maitreya Muni when he's talking with... Um, uh, I, think, I think he's talking to Vidura. If not, yeah, Vidura. Yeah. yeah, they were together, they were coupled up, yes. And they were talking about Paramatma. I can't think of it at the moment. No, what uh, what you're referring to? Perhaps we brought it before. I apologize for that. You just want a verse that verifies there's Paramatma. That the lotus feet of the Lord are already within us. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Although yeah. they are so far away in Vaikuntha, and we think they are so far away, but yeah. they are in the heart of everybody. Yes. So that's Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. No, I can't remember the exact shloka, but you did make me think about something that um, a lot of people have this idea God is remote, you know, somewhere in his own abode. And for sure he's there. This is the position of Bhagavan. But we also have to bear in mind that God is in the heart of all living beings and is very close. You really don't have to search very far. You know? The journey is within, basically. It's not so ma much a matter of journey without. It's within. God is already there. Cultivated. God is in the heart of the cobra that will bite you and sting you and make, maybe kill you. God is in the heart there as well. God is in the heart of a little tick that might give you Lyme disease and kill you after a month or two or a year or two later. You know? How should a devotee be thinking about that? God is in the heart of the tick and he's giving me trouble. <laughs> that is not trouble, that is mercy, Maharaj. That family is that mercy? Family. I was saying that wouldn't be pain, that would be mercy, that Krishna uh -huh. was allowing me to come see him sooner. Yes. Yes. 
We have to see everything as Krishna's mercy. Did we go through this recently? Of course, we were looking at chapter 12 of the Gita, not so long ago, devotional service. Let's look, look at verse 13 and 14. And in the purport in particular. Okay, right in the beginning of the purport, I just want to share with you something that's really so profound. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, well, I'll just start coming again to the point of pure devotional service. The Lord is describing the transcendental qualifications of a pure devotee in these two verses. A pure devotee is never disturbed by any circumstances, nor is he envious of anyone, nor does a devotee become his enemy's enemy. He thinks this person is acting as my enemy due to my own past misdeeds. So it is better to suffer than to protest. That's the point I want to get on there. Uh, if Krishna might put you in a difficult situation, uh, yeah, but see it as Krishna is doing it. And then better to accept it than to protest it. Hey, why are you doing this to me? You know. What, what are some of the benefits of suffering as opposed to always shouting and screaming for your rights? What would be a benefit? Well, Maharaj, my, my dad, he was a Marine. And uh, um, he was always telling us that complaints don't build character. But he was yeah. saying that if something bad happens, be appreciative because God only will let you suffer as much as you can suffer. So be thankful that God let that happen to you because other people can't couldn't handle that. They couldn't tolerate it. Or he knows you can. So you should be you should be thankful. That's how my dad, my and my dad, God rest his soul. He had bullet wounds and scrap metal and all types of stories. And he was like, that was God helping me. Wow. Yeah. That is so not profound for you to share that with us. Okay. I know when I was with the group from Vancouver the other day. Uh, we pulled that out, right, Nitai Priya? We looked at this verse, remember? Are you yes, Maharaj, yes. Right, and although you always say that uh, we have, there's all, so many topics there about abuse, and, um, and it, it's true, we have to, you know, guard, keep up our guard to protect ourselves. But then there's a point where, um, you know, there are, there are challenges that come our way, like you're talking about bullets and marks and everything like that, right? A Descartes that your dad had to face. And, you know, is that a, character building doesn't come from the easy life. It comes from going through some pain, isn't it? Like anybody that I know that has gone through a lot of suffering and pain within, maybe physically, they usually have a lot to share. They usually have a lot to give. Yeah. All right, Chris. There's depth in a person's character. Yeah. So I just want to share that with you. So if Krishna's putting us through pain, we should be somewhat joyful. Krishna's rewarding us uh, in, a, in a kind way. That is also Krishna's mercy. What is not Krishna's mercy? That's really the question. Hare Krishna. Anybody? I got, I got one for you. Uh, okay. The silly stuff we do to ourselves, like, <laughs> for example, like, my wife used to tell me all the time, like, when I get into a car accident, she'd be like, see, it's all your fault. And I'd be like, no, 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 it's the guy, it's the guy who hit me. And always, I always come back to the, well, thank goodness that the law sided with me. And my, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, I do drive a little fast. Luckily, that cop saw it my way. Mm. <laughs> so that that's definitely suffering that I've done to myself. You know, it's like I don't look at I don't look at my driveway as like, oh, it's the driveway of expensive cars. I look at it as well, experience. I learned <laughs> not to do that silly stuff no more. So I drive the speed limit now. Oh, great. You learn the hard way. <laughs> wow. Nice, nice. Thank you for sharing. That's nice when people say something about devotees here, say something about what they have gone through. Yeah, much appreciated. 
Good. Anybody else have any comments on this shloka, the verse, the purport, anything at all? The Maharaj. This verse, of course. Yeah. Maharaj, can I just add one more point? So recently, in the last two, I think, few days, uh, a devotee from Iskand Brampton, her name is Ujwala Mataji. She has only one son, yeah. 20 years old, and uh, he died in a car accident. He was not a driver, he was a passenger. And just, she lost... Just recently? Yeah, she was uh, going on north of Ninth Line, intercepted by a person driving from uh, east to west on Derry Line, hit from the side, and on the spot, the person died, you know, that Mataji's son died. Uh, so I'm thinking what the mother would be going through, yeah. the suffering. Yes. It's very pain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of pain. People go through a lot, for sure. Yeah. Well, last night I was walking on Young Street and right where the old Sam the Record Man uh, shop used to be, they now have a big university building. It was called Ryerson. They found out Ryerson was kind of a culprit and he was responsible for many of the indigenous children to suffer. So they changed the name of the university. They took away Ryerson and made it Toronto. Metropolitan University. It's not a very glamorous sounding name, but anyways, I was walking and on the steps of that university, two guys were sitting there at middle age. They said, hey, uh, come on, I have some questions. So the, the one fellow, he was a little bit sort of a husky type out of the two, he said, you know, I've seen you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit boasting, you know, I've been with beautiful women. I've been with some women that are not so beautiful. And of course, some of these people were just outstanding individuals. They're just great human beings. And some were just outright demons. So uh, I, I'm trying to analyze that. And uh, uh, what, what, what can you make a comment, Swami, about that? Okay. Uh, this was, these were two Caucasian guys. They were just curious. They saw me coming up. They first said to me, uh, are, are you a Christian or you are a Lama? I said, well, I'm definitely not a Christian. I'm not a Lama. I'm a Hare Krishna. The other guy knew he's a, he's a Krishna monk. So he just wanted my opinion about these extreme conditions that he's went through. And I said, well, you know, we live in a world of dualities. Always. We're up, we're down. And, um, you know, the fact that we go through this kind of roller coaster should make us a little bit strong to help us build character. That's the effect it should have. Right. So we were, we got quite deep in our conversation. It was really wonderful. On a Wednesday night, there's a lot of wild traffic buzzing around. And he had, he was, he went deep, it was good. You know, he just asked me, can you give me some advice? Oh, I should see the world. And I said, well, try to understand are your true identity. We're not these bodies, we're not the flesh, we're spirits. And my role is, and your role is or should be that we do service to others, you know, and ultimately to God. Anyways, it was so nice to have a conversation like that on Young Street, where people are always out looking for some something other than you know what they should be doing. Yeah, opportunities opportunities and uh, difficult times, sweet times, sour times, it's okay. Try to see it like a Chinese subji. Sweet, sour subji, have you ever had any of those? No, uh, we didn't, we didn't speak hear, up. we didn't hear you. Anybody speak. like sweet, sour subjis? We were unable to Can hear anybody you. hear me? Maharaj? Can't hear me? I can hear you. Maharaj? Yeah. We were somehow we couldn't hear you saying something about how to deal with uh, when we go through that difficulties. Extreme conditions. I was just saying that the dualities that live in this world, which pose themselves as extremes, 
we have to learn to kind of apply it through life, uh, a very equal poised, not get too affected by extreme conditions. Keep equal poised is the term that we use sometimes. Keep level headed, you know, and if you do that, then you will not get caught up in deep emotions. You always be able to have a clear head when you carry on in life, dealing with extreme conditions. Don't get overly anxious. Don't get overly elated. Just keep moving along. Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Anybody have some thoughts on it? Yep. Uh, a question. What would you tell that lady who just lost her son? Well, you have to certainly empathize. What I would say, I'm very, very sorry at the loss of your life of your good son. He meant a lot to you. And you meant a lot to him. And uh, so we share in this weeping, uh, you know, don't worry. Um, try to appreciate that um, he's in a better place uh, because of his good deeds. And all we can do is pray for his safe journey. You, know, you can try to slip in something philosophical, but that doesn't usually work. He's not this body. He's a spirit. That's a little hard for some people. That's a hard pill to swallow. So I think it's really important as soft, caring Vaishnavas that we show a lot of empathy. Yeah, I hope that helps out. <laughs> Thank you. I, I agree, Tomahas. Yeah. Yes, Arjun. So I, I was thinking about. Arjun, Kunti. do you have any? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I was thinking about Kunti that she will always say that let the calamities come. So yeah. I, will, I, will, I will always be thinking about Krishna. Yeah. And uh, I think. I, I, yeah. There is, a, there is only one Kunti Devi. I'm sorry, what is the point? No, I mean, the interjection is very nice, but there is only one Kunti Devi in the entire, in the history of this um, universe or whatever. Yes. So what's the point you want to make? His remark is about Kunti accepting, you know, suffering, you know. Mm -hmm. Being no, tough in life, is, accepting difficulties. My point is that except Kunti Devi, nobody will invite uh, Klesha. I see. This is my point. Yeah. I see. I gotcha. Klesha meaning difficulty. Well, that's true. That's true. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that there's some devotees out there that have some fine sentiments that are very developed and I think that the best mood to carry is that, my dear Lord, I'm yours. Whatever you want to give me, I'll, just, I'll take it. You know, Give me good days, bad days. But just give me strength to be able to deal with uh, these uh, challenges that are presented before me. Let me be strong to be able to cope with them. I mean, people pray, Krishna, please give me help. So then Krishna helps by sometimes putting you into difficult circumstances. So that you become strong to know how to deal with difficult situations. It's a good prayer to have. So why don't we go for some uh, takeaways? I'm actually in the middle of drama. And uh, I took the time off to be with you, Prabhu's Hare Krishna. Thank you. And uh, so I thought we'd just go for uh, any takeaways, any thoughts that was dwelling in your mind that you'd like to share with others. Go ahead.
Professor Raj. Uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, sorry, I came very late, so I'm slightly uh, disconnected. But uh, uh, okay, Nita, I forget. Do you have something? Yes, Maharaj. Just the last thing you mentioned that you know when we pray for help, sometimes the form of help comes in in a little bit of a difficulty because it's something that will make us stronger and able to have the strength to face the thing we need help with. Uh, that is exactly what it is. I remember seeing one guy on my first walk. He sort of had half teeth on. I thought, oh my God, here's a person that. What does he want? I said, can I share something with you? And he walked with us for a bit, me and two other devotees. We are by Lake Superior area. And um, he said, I just want to let you, I want to share with you my prayer. Every day I pray to the day. And I say day, whatever you are presenting before me, help me to be strong so that I can cope with the challenges that you present to me. And at the, at the end of the day, I actually pray to the day, you know, when the sun goes down. So thank you very much for, you know, giving me the tools that I need so that I can uh, um, manage the daily affairs, which take on a very challenging uh, position in most cases. I just thought it was very sweet for him to do that. He looked a little disheveled, but he certainly was a smart man in one way. Okay, so thank you, Nitai Priya, beautiful. And who else do we have? Uh, we have Arjun, go ahead, take away. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So I, I wanted to say, pertaining this this um this class today, that we should be very thankful because we, we don't appreciate sometimes, we take it for granted that people die every day, yeah. you know, and, and, and Mother Nature is, is acting and is killing everything. And uh, mm. we forget about that death is just around the corner. But the, the thing is that we don't we don't think about it because it doesn't happen to us. So we should be, be very appreciative. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. The gratitude should be stepped up always by us all. Jagadishwar, do you have a takeaway quickly? Jagadishwar, okay. Udai, you have something? Uh, yes. Uh... I'm laying down because my back is hurting. Oh, oh, sorry. So anyway, um, I my feelings, not feelings, my uh, my mind tells me that I don't know every day that I wake up here and now, you know, just just mm. do it, do it, do it, you know. So do you want to listen to your mind or do you want to listen to Krishna? Krishna. Okay, great. Listen to him then. <laughs> Let's start I, do his work. <laughs> I start by chanting, you know. I'm mm. only on the basic level, you know. Mm. I don't try to, you know, uh, expand so much. Mm. Very good, very good. All right, uh, Vasanta, would you like to say something? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, well, I think my take is, yes, is um, we have been given this life, you know, human life to realize ourselves and Bhagwan within us. But uh, I think I wasted my life to not doing, doing everything else except. So at least I hope, you know, in future I learn to concentrate and learn to concentrate. Great. So you reach out to Krishna for that, for right? Our real home. <laughs> the courage. Uh, nice, nice. Okay, and uh, Udai, do you have something? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, yeah, like, uh, like I said in the beginning, like Krishna is not a deserter. Uh, like he assists us, he accompanies us, he's like... I was thinking like supreme personality of fatherhood or motherhood, something like that. So yeah, something mm -hmm. like that. So that is like mm -hmm. coming from this interaction of ours. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And uh, Dharma and Manasi Ganga, can you quickly give us a takeaway? 
You're muted. About now, Maharaj? Um, yeah. So, uh, my, my takeaway from the class is that, you know, dualities exist. We try to moderate them. And if you are in stressful condition, um, try to meditate on Krishna. That would, you know, help to come out of stress. Thank you so much. Thank you, Krishna. That's... Always remember him and never forget him. Two injunctions. Great. Uh, Gunam, do you have something? Hare or Manasi Ganga, do you Hare have Krishna. something else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even though uh, Krishna like, says some um, sufferings, we should take as Krishna's mercy. Um, yes. I want to, I, I, I try to learn that to take that suffering as Krishna's mercy. Yes, very good. <laughs> Good, 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 good. And Gunam, do you have something you want to share? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, does everybody have a two Atma? Is one is Paramatma, other one is Jivatma? Yeah, that's right. That's right. There are two, well, let, let's say within the body, there's at least two. There's Paramatmas everywhere. Living entities are everywhere. Yeah. So you've got all you've got Paramatma for your next door neighbor. <laughs> Everywhere, right in your backyard, side yard, up to the chimney and down the basement. <laughs> yeah, good. That's good. Anybody else? For our last little, before we close off. Yeah, my, I, did I miss somebody? I, my takeaway is uh, your metaphor about the uh, condominium. I love oh. that. And I hope I will remember when I'm dealing with other people. <laughs> Yeah, that always helps to remember Krishna's everywhere in our space. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, can right. I say? I'm sorry? I, can I say something, Maharaj? Yes. Uh, uh, Maharaj, I, what I understand from Bhagavatam that uh, if Krishna chastises somebody, so he's more lucky than a person uh, whom Krishna does not chastise. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a very special mercy uh, of Krishna, uh, whom he uh, chastises. Mm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah, very nice point. Very good, good. A strong lesson that Prabhupada learned from his early days, yes. Good, good. Anyone else? Okay, now next week I'm in the middle of two um, Radhiatras. Uh, this weekend is my Montreal, and we're taking a whole big troop of our actors over there, and then we're going to do the same kind of show. I think it's probably going to be best if we cancel this weekend for myself, uh, just because it's super busy. It's like our busiest weekend of the whole year. So we just have to skip uh, and then just come back on the following Um I'll be traveling a little bit, but I'll keep my eyes and ears open for the, the time zone changes. So for the next time we can get together, it would be, let's see, it was, it was the 18th, about the 21st, is that a Thursday? Yes, my friend. What, Vaishnavi? Okay, yeah. all right, good. Vaishnavi, do you have a realization at all? Um, well, one of the things we read was um, from the Satyana Kampamsa Samikshamana. Yeah. So um, you were reading uh, the, the first sentence in, in the purport where Prabhupada says, um, so it is better to suffer than to protest. Yeah. I don't know right. how to do it, but then... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you have to draw some lines for sure. Yeah. Okay, good. So thank you, everyone. We'll see you on is it the 21st. Can someone confirm that? Yes, Maharaj. It is 21st. It is 21st. You just yeah. remind everyone we're not on this next week because it's summertime. Go jump in a Kool Aid, go down to being down the springs and uh, do whatever you want to do. Okay? And take some. <laughs> 
take in some recreation as part of your studies. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Arimal. Take care. Thank you.